present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us once again at the splendid Yvonne Arno Theatre in Guildford. The town is first recorded in the 9th century when King Alfred used Guildford as a base to launch his attack on Danish-held London. His army managing to reach the outskirts of the city in less than six hours, a feat occasionally matched to this day by... <laughs> <laughs> by Southwest Trains. <laughs> Nearby are many natural attractions, including one of Surrey's highest points at Leith Hill. Allowing for the weather, on a reasonable day, you can see as far as Seven Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> on a perfect day, you can't see it at all. <laughs> you find us back for a second show here, and after last week's, there was only one word to describe the team's performances. Staggering. <laughs> Let's hope they've sobered up a bit. <laughs> they are on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Fred McCauley. <laughs> on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and please welcome the return of our lovely scorer, Samantha. <laughs> We didn't, we didn't have the pleasure of Samantha's company last week, but it's certainly a pleasure to have her on the desk next to me tonight. <laughs> Round one this week is historical headlines, where the team suggests how our newspapers might have described certain ancient events. This shouldn't be confused with a popular game called Historical Ned Lines, where players listen to a lengthy series of showbiz anecdotes from Ned Sherrin. <laughs> The winner being the first to spot a living heterosexual. <laughs> okay, team, suggestions, please, of headlines in the daily papers or other publications reporting an historical event. And the first is Sir Walter Rowley presents Tobacco and Potatoes at the Court of Elizabeth I. Tim, will you start, please? I have a cuffing here from the Monte Carlo Times. <laughs> <laughs> Rothmans to sponsor rally. <laughs> the, um, there's a sun headline after the Queen dismissed rally. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Chips. <laughs> Great. Um, I thought the Financial Times might have uh, run with Chancellor admits he may have blundered with tax on potatoes scheme. <laughs> Graham, <laughs> interestingly, um, earlier in the sun, there was a headline, Queen <laughs> says great shag, Walter. <laughs> OK, magazine, Queen's potato goes out, exclusive pictures. <laughs> She's been smoking the potato. No. You mean instead of a cigarette? Yes. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that would have been a mistake on her part. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah, but, but that could have great comic potential. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> not now, but... <laughs> Shall we go on? <laughs> oh, there's one here from the Guardian. Rally helps Queen to cross Poodle. <laughs> Any more on that? Sunday sport, alien spud stole my fags. <laughs> <laughs> well, sticking meticulously to my script, that went well, here's another. <laughs> Oedipus Rex blinds himself after marrying his mother, Jocasta. The Independent, Oedipus Rex blinds himself after marrying his mother, Jocasta. <laughs> and the Express, I've stopped seeing her, says Oedipus. <laughs> huh. 
River, a Mirror exclusive, Oedipus to become a referee. <laughs> the Daily Mail, Oedipus likes potato by mistake. <laughs> We have a musical game next called Pick Up Song, where the teams sing along to a well-known record. As ever, Samantha spends some hours down in the gramophone archives selecting the team's discs. You know, she puts in a lot of hard work on this round, and she gets a bit set up with silly comments about the way she checks the team's seven inches, or pulls, <laughs> pulls out my reproduction equipment and twists the knob. <laughs> Samantha tells me she tries to take no notice of these pathetic, pure hour critics but it isn't always easy to ignore her knockers. <laughs> anyway, I see she's in DJ mode at the turntable and ready to spin the first disc. Each panelist should sing along in turn until at my signal she fades the volume down to nothing. You should continue singing teams, the object being to stay in time with the record. If on the music return you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original, I'll be awarding points, and points mean prizes, and prizes mean rich people. What do prizes mean? Rich people! Not on the BBC, they don't. <laughs> this week's prize is just a thing for the food lover who can never remember what he likes for pudding. It's this tin of amnesia creamed rice. <laughs> Fred, we'll... <laughs> Fred, we'll start with you. Will you please accompany Little Richard singing Tutti Frutti? Tutti Frutti, oh Rudy, Tutti Frutti, Tutti Frutti, oh Rudy, keep up the joke. Tutti Frutti, oh Rudy, Tutti Frutti, oh Rudy, a wop ba ba loo bop, a wop bam boom. I got a gal named Sue. She knows just what to do. I got a gal named Sue. She knows just what to do. She rocks to the east. She rocks to the west. But she's the gal that I love best. Tutti Frutti. Oh, Rudy. Oh, Tutti Frutti. Oh, Rudy. Tutti Frutti. Oh, Rudy. Tutti Frutti. Oh, Rudy. Tutti Frutti. Oh, Rudy. Ah. Okay, your turn, Graham. Would you please accompany Fat Boy Slim singing his wonderful Rockefeller Skank? <laughs> right about now, the Funk Soul Brother. Check it out now, the Funk Soul Brother. Right about now, the Funk Soul Brother. Check it out now, the Funk Soul Brother. Right about now, the Funk Soul Brother. People get paid for this, the Funk Soul Brother. Right about now. The Funk Soul Brother, right about now, about now, about now, about now. One, two, instrumental, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right about now, the Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. The Funk Soul Brother, right about now, the Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. I can never remember whether it's Rogers or Hammerstein who writes the words. <laughs> Your turn, Tim. I'd like you to accompany Robbie Williams singing Let Me Entertain You. of everything I used to be. You're my rock of empathy, my dear. So come on, let me entertain you. Let me entertain you. Life's too short for you to die, so grab yourself an alibi. Heaven knows your mother lied. Mon cher, pretentious moi, separate your right from wrong. Come sing a different song. Kettle's on, so don't belong. Mon cher, so come on, let me. I wasn't given an introduction. Finally, Barry, I'd like you to accompany in true ragamuffin style Apache Indian singing Boom Shakalak. <laughs> Wiggle your belly, dip and go down in the new style. 
wine and go up, wine and go down. Bubble and a rock to the new style around. You pay line it up, you pay wine it up. I do boom shakalaka till the dance hall pull up. The boom shakalaka, the brand new style. Wicked say it, wicked, yeah, yeah, don't say I'm it, why? The ragamuffin style, pay the discipline child. Dip and go down, start well, <laughs> you pay, move your ways. You pay, move your back. Wine and go down. Okay, well, our next... I, I don't like carrying me throat on the air. It's better to do it in the privacy of her own home. <laughs> <laughs> our next round is sound charades, where the teams promise to dazzle the audience with their miming skills. Personally, I doubt if the teams could dazzle them if they were fitted with halogen headlamps. <laughs> it's only a game. Okay, Tim and Fred will start by performing their charade, providing the clue to the title of a film, book, or TV program. Their title will now be displayed to our theatre audience, and for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Tea with Mussolini. Tea with Mussolini. Hmm. Off you go, Tim and Fred. Okay, three words, and it's a, a film. I don't know if there's a book or not. Okay, here we go. One lump or two, Vicar. Only one for me. I see these are lovely. Yes, I brought them back from Abyssinia. <laughs> In fact, I brought back most of Abyssinia. <laughs> I like your shirt, Vicar. Thanks, yes. I, I always wear this colour. I, I see you do too. Huh? I see you've got a piano. Do, do you mind if I play? Oh, certainly. Um, what were you thinking of playing then? Oh, it's an old uh, traditional song. I'm hanging from a lamppost at the corner of the street. <laughs> well, this is obviously nothing to do with Mussolini, nothing. so we can dismiss, dismiss that immediately. Any thoughts, Graham? Uh, no, none, unless it's... Um, no, it wouldn't be the English patient. <laughs> oh, the Scottish vicar. <laughs> Tea with Mussolini, is that a hint? <laughs> it's not that film called Tea with Mussolini, is it? Oh! That's just where you're wrong, Graham. <laughs> it is that film. <laughs> OK, your turn, Barry and Graham. Your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Godzilla. Godzilla. It's one word. Mm -hmm. Film, two films. Two films? Yeah. Ah. Uh, two films. Ah. Yes. And here it is. Good morning. How's the patient today? Uh, not very well, I'm afraid. What? But he's the supreme being, the creator of the world. <laughs> Maybe, but he fell ill yesterday. Yes. And today's what? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fred's got this. Mm. It's the supreme being that gave it away. It's something, something to do with Newt Gingrich, isn't it? <laughs> Godzilla. <Hey. laughs> It's time now for our version of the great college student TV quiz, which has been retitled specially to suit our teams. It's called Universally Challenged. <laughs> I shall be taking the role of Jeremy Paxman. <laughs> so, teams, start the questions are worth ten points, an incorrect challenge costing five points away. Okay, everyone? I said, okay, everyone? Yep. Come on, yep. come on, wake up. Yep. <laughs> Let's meet our first team. Tim and Fred, will you introduce yourselves, please? Hmm. Um, <laughs> hello, I'm Tim, and I'm reading travel brochures at Lum Poly. <laughs> now known as the University of Lum. <laughs> 
And this is my teammate. Hello, I'm Fred and I'm reading the three R's. <laughs> reading, writing and spelling. <laughs> okay, uh, the, their opposition is sitting directly above them, Barry and Graham. <laughs> Barry and Graham, please introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Barry, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong meeting. <laughs> and uh, I'm Graham, and I'm reading the answers over your shoulder. <laughs> okay, teams, your first starter, fingers on buzzers, no conferring. What is the literal translation of the French expression, je ne sais pas? Yes. I, I don't know. <laughs> You mustn't buzz in if you don't know. <laughs> Five points away for an incorrect challenge. <laughs> and for the, the full question now to whoever's on the other side. What is the translation of the French je ne sais pas into German? <laughs> Graham. Uh, ich bin ein Berliner. <laughs> what does that mean? I've no idea. Well, that's close enough. The answer is actually... The answer is actually, I don't know. Here are your questions, Barry and Graham. Why can't you buy tin bananas? <laughs> Graham. Because nobody sells them. Well, the real answer is extremely boring. It's due to extreme temperatures in the thinning process. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go on. Why do the Chinese eat with chopsticks? Yeah, Barry. Because the fork's out of the question. <laughs> well, it's because Confucius said they shouldn't use instruments of slaughter at the dining table. Gosh, did he speak English? <laughs> Better than many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what sport puts the greatest strain on the human body? Um, ladies beach volleyball. <laughs> Half an hour of watching that and I'm absolutely... <laughs> well, it says here, probably motor racing. I don't know why they put the thing in. Probably. The <laughs> okay, next start of a ten. Fingers on buzzers. What is... Is it uh, Ulan Bator? Well interrupted, friend. <laughs> the capital of Mongolia is indeed Ulan Bator. <laughs> okay, so your questions now, Tim and Fred. How did the expression put a sock in it originate? Uh, that came from the instruction manual on the world's smallest tumble dryer. <laughs> oh, very singular. Actually, I can tell you the answer. Old-fashioned gramophones had no volume control, so we used to put a sock in the horn. If you, you say we, you call it a mute, don't you? We did. We. <laughs> yeah. You I were was, there. I was there. Oh, my goodness. And if they still bang on the walls, you put your underpants as well. <laughs> oh, here's one. Is it true Adolf Hitler once lived in Liverpool? Uh, I think you're confusing him with Judy Finnegan. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 indeed, no. he stayed a few months in Toxteth with his sister-in-law, Bridget Hitler. <laughs> Today, Liverpool, tomorrow, the Wirral. <laughs> is, it, is it true he got his hubcaps necked off his panzer? <laughs> Why do bras fasten at the back? If they opened at the front, she wouldn't be able to see the film properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's brought back a few memories. <laughs> Well, the real answer is because at one time all ladies were dressed by a maid. Oh, she must have been busy. Well, <laughs> well, it's now time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. 
the first, I see we've received only slightly less than two cards this week. <laughs> and it comes from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. She writes, Dear Libby. <laughs> Many congratulations to the teams on their exciting news. I've just heard they've been offered long-term contracts to appear exclusively on Sky. <laughs> and hats off to the Highlands and Islands Development Board for giving us <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis. Okay, on with the game. And this week, by way of variety, we'll be playing reverse Mornington Crescent. In this highly exacting variation, the first player actually starts at Mornington Crescent, after which each subsequent player has to deduce what the previous move would have been to have arrived at that position, and so on until the first move is identified by the winner. Okay, Tim, you can start. There are no other rules, are there? It's just straightforward backwards. Straight. <laughs> yes. In that case, Mornington Crescent. Oh. Perry. <clears throat> ah, now, Birdcage Walk. Yeah. Fred. Morton. Difficult one, because I don't think I was around at that time, but I think uh, it would be Hammersmith. Yeah, that's right. The reverse, of course, it is. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Graham, try not to sound patronising, but it's Johnny Good. <laughs> that must have come after Piccadilly. Why? <laughs> Morton. Morton. Uh, Canada Water. What? Jubilee Line. Where? Canada, great. That came after. Ah, oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't forget the no, York, York Street. Elephant. York Street. Elephant. Please Elephant. trust Elephant. me. What? Elephant. Oh! Over there, look. <laughs> Sorry it takes so much time, but this is really tough. Um, no, you're doing jolly well. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Uh, Regent's Park? Take your time. <laughs> That's not my final answer then. No. <laughs> I think you'll find you that not Ah, uh, right. My apologies. Mm. Is that Regent's Park? Too? I'm Sorry. not sticking with Regent's Park. I'm changing it before the time's up to Arnold's Grove. Excellent. Graham, your move? Uh, Baron's Court. Collier's Wood. That's the one. Cleveland Street. St. John's Wood Road. King's Cross. Yes! Oh, oh. Yes! Yes! Finally! Our next round has an American flavour. Yes, it's now time to look across the pond to Uncle Sam and think if he does let him there again, I'm calling the police. <laughs> Anyway, I have here the opening lines of a selection of American proverbs, which I'd like the teams to complete. I'm starting with you, Graham Garden. Even a blind pig occasionally picks up... Radio 4. <laughs> <laughs> An acorn is the answer. Barry, if a beard were a sign of smartness... Robin Cook would be foreign secretary. <laughs> The real answer is the goat would be Socrates. That's what Fred. he said. <laughs> Fred, a bird in the sack is worth... Taking a photo of. <laughs> well, it's actually two on the wing. Tim, if you play with the bull, you will get her... Rested. <laughs> Is horn in the arse. And here's some for. <laughs> Did you say a horn in the arse? Well, I gabbled it so that uh, I'd get out of trouble. Okay, here are some for anyone to complete. Man is like a banana. You can't get them in tin. <laughs> <laughs> is it. Uh, seriously, is it. If you peel his skin off, he starts to rot? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> it's when he leaves the bunch, he gets skinned. 
If the wind blows on you through a hole, <laughs> move to another cubicle. <laughs> It's almost the end of the show, but it's just time to hear the arrivals at the Countryman's Ball. So while Samantha goes off for a few days with the young chaps of the Guildford Hounds, she says you can't beat 14 hands of Hunter underneath you. I'd like the teams to announce the late arrivals of the ball for hunters, shooters, fishers and other lovers of the countryside. Are you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Ethically Modified Crop. <laughs> and their daughter Jean. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Badger today, and their daughter Frida. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. You'll leave the sheep alone, and their son Ken, you leave the sheep alone. <laughs> From Germany, welcome Herr and Frau Gidiot, and their son Willy Gidiot. <laughs> Will you welcome also from Germany, Frau Korsing and her totally unnecessarily cruel husband, Herr Korsing. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Greenwellies and their daughter, Barbara Ann. <laughs> you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Dancing and their embarrassing son, Maurice. <laughs> Buy your tickets now for the country hunt ball. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> Fancy dress, wear full costume, wear Reynard's brush on your head. It's at Morton Hampstead. Wear the fox hat. <laughs> it's in Devon, I think. <laughs> A big warm welcome, please, for Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, your bloody hounds have eaten my kitten. <laughs> And their son, Gordon Bennett, your my kitten. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the pleasant sitting room of time is mutilated by the Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen of destiny, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams and Samantha and myself and the good people of Guildford, it's goodbye. The Bethenor, Barry Cryer, Graham Gardner and Fred McCauley were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Fell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith.